Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Well-Being and Lifestyle Show. My name is Dr. Peter Amato. I'm here today with my co-host, the beautiful Miss Julia Brown, all the way from St. Martin in the Caribbean. Thank you for having us. We're on location today in beautiful Pennsylvania in the United States at the Harmony Mountain Institute for Living. We've got a really special show for you today. We've got a, a doctor who's got degrees in medicine, not only medicine, integrative medicine. He's also a chiropractic physician. He's the author of 19 books on health, health maintenance, and he's been translated with his books in 12 languages. He's lectured in over 30 countries. He's really a powerful dude. And today, Dr. Fisher is going to be talking to us about immune dysfunction and how it's become a global epidemic. We'll be right back with One Love and Dr. Fisher. See you in a minute. All right, folks, welcome back. We're here today with Dr. Howard Fisher. Welcome, Dr. Fisher. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Maddow. Pleasure to be here. It's an honor to have you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Fisher, he's so vast in his information. He knows so much about so many things. He wanted to specify today about a real global epidemic called immune dysfunction. All right? We all know, and it's getting worse, cancer rates have increased as a result of the immune system being suppressed, leading to so many disorders, and that's what he wants to talk about and break it down for us. All right, Dr. Fisher, you're on, my friend. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mano. So if we examine how society was many, many years ago, there were less environmental toxicity. There was less environmental pollutants. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of chemicals that are being dumped here, and we don't know what the cause is. But what we do know is that there's been a change in both the numbers of autoimmune diseases and the incidence of disease that is shortening our life and ending our life. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of years, the lifespan of the average American has gotten to be less. It used to be 79 years, now it's 78.1 years. It's moving less. So what are we dying from? And why has it grown and gone so rapidly? Well, uh, I believe it's the fact that we can't keep up with all the changes. We can't. Our bodies are unable to respond because every, every entity that comes into contact with your body, whether you ingest it, inhale it, or absorb it through your skin, your immune system must deal with. So when there's more, when there's more of these... What we're getting, in fact, is more disease. And, and how do we see that? Well, we see that the fact that autoimmune diseases have grown from, from 2 to 139. We see wow. that from the fact that, that cancer is now vying with heart disease to be the number one killer. And I'd like to do uh, a show on what we can do about cancer uh, for you because there are a lot of things that we can do. And so I've always been looking on ways to improve the immune system. Right. And this will, in fact, add years to our life and quality to our life. Absolutely. And at our clinic in the Caribbean, we see a lot of people with autoimmune disease and cancer as well. And so much can be done regarding what you say the root cause being the immune system and how it's gone downhill over the last few generations with the chronic infections and the diseases that are now rampant in society. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you just examine that, uh, we now have diseases that are resistant to the antibiotics that were created. We have diseases that are killing people when they're in the hospital because we don't have antibiotics that can combat it. Our immune system is under attack because we're no longer functioning. Dr. Jesse Stoff, uh, he's a virologist from Arizona, did a study where he looked at natural killer cells, the levels of natural killer cells, and found that 
normal is about 250 lytic units, that 98% of the population is 80 to 90% deficient in these numbers. They're functioning at 10 to 20. Wow. Instead of 250. So what can this lead to? Well, if we don't have our immune system, what is taking care of our bodies? We all remember the boy in the bubble. We all remember that, the we boy do. in the bubble. Right, so he had to live in a bubble. Why? Because anything, anything would be dangerous That's to him. Right. Anything would be uh, a possible life ender because he did not have an immune system that was functional. Oh. And, and it's happening to younger and younger people. It's alopecia. We all know people that go bald. Everybody knows people that go bald. Now we see younger people with uh, alopecia areata. It's, it's a round circle. There's hair missing in a round circle. And, and these are just some of the autoimmune diseases that are affecting us significantly. I mean, they're making changes. Type 2 diabetes, that's not autoimmune. That's from abuse that we're doing. Type 1 diabetes, that's autoimmune. That and rheumatoid arthritis were the fundamental disorders that we had that we could identify because there were less pollutants at that time. We were able to function better. Now we're filled with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of chemicals. Wow. And how has medical technology and medicine been able to deal with all of these autoimmune issues? Not well, but you know what? There is a solution we can discuss when we come back. All right, folks, we're here today with Dr. Howard Fisher. He's talking about the collapse of the immune system. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's very what do you serious. Think, Brown? I think it affects everybody all over the world, and it's something, a topic that, because I myself sitting here hearing some stuff for the first time, and I'm sure persons sitting on their couch would like to hear more about what Dr. Fisher has to say in regards to our immune system. Absolutely. All right, folks, One Love over and out. We'll be right back. All righty, welcome back, folks. One Love with Dr. Howard Fisher here today. And we're going to dive into the immune system, the demise of it, and what we can do about it. All right, doctor, let's have it. Thanks, Dr. Maddow. So basically, if we know that there are environmental factors involved... Whoa, whoa, what do you mean by environmental factors, sir? Pollution in the air, pollution in the water, pollution in the food... If we know that there are environmental factors involved... The food's polluted? Absolutely. Okay. How, how is it that DDT, that was banned in 1979, is still found in the food chain in the United States? I'm sorry, what is DDT for our listeners? Because It's uh, a pesticide. It's a pesticide, okay. Yeah, and, and we all know about the issues we're having with uh, glyphosate, uh, which is Monsanto's Roundup, and so, How about the aluminum? Well, the aluminum is everywhere, and there's still lead from, from leaded gas. Trust me yeah. that there's enough okay. to keep your body... Um, Toxic. Yes. Okay. So once we try to clean up right. our environment, try to watch what we eat, breathe, or drink. Food, the air, the water, yeah. There you go. Once we try to do that, now what steps can we take to combat the immune deficiencies? Well, proper nutrition. Proper nutrition it has been affected. The food chain has been killed. With chemicals. And so chemicals. Yeah. You're right. right. So so there's a there's a doctor that I know, and and the man is brilliant. He's got a medical degree, a naturopathic degree, traditional Chinese medicine degree. Uh, was a forensic pathologist for many many years. And then put together a formula, a natural formula. Find the purest of ingredients and that function in a manner to drive up the numbers of CD4 and CD8 natural killer cells in your body. These are the cells that don't need... Um, you, you've all heard of the allergies where there's an antigenic response and the immune system responding inappropriately or, or whatever. Well, so that's an antigen antibody response, right, to a situation. Natural killer cells, they don't need that. They just see things that are tagged non-self and try to kill it. So 
This being the case, he worked for years to put together a formula that would address those issues. And we all know about, we all know about major problems. Every time. Well, they go to school, they get flus, they get colds, they get whatever. Well, this formula expedites in any disorder that's not being filled by the food chain. What do I mean by that? Well, if there's only three things we have to do for health, breathe, drink fluids, eat food, we should be reasonably healthy. We are, we are not. The, but they told us. The incidence of disease, as they say, let's use the U.S. statistics, over 700 million chronic diseases, population is less than half of that. So it's not working. So is it because not enough air? No, no. I, I don't think any of these have been caused from lack of air, although some of the pollutants in it are affecting us. Is it from a lack of water? No, no. It's not from a lack of water because people aren't dying of dehydration. Right. So there must be something missing in the food. And if it's missing in the food to be able to support us, then we have that issue. So what if we found a way to supply the nutrition that was missing in our food chain that would bolster our immune system so we get ill less often because our immune system can take care of ourselves? And that's, in fact, what this, this formula is, immune response. Before we get into that, Dr. Fisher, I love that name, immune response. Why are we not getting what we need from the food? Well, we talked about GMOs, we talked about glyphosate, we talked about Monsanto's Roundup, uh, we talked about pollutants, pollutants into the soil, Maybe we're getting too much that we need. In 1935, Dr. Charles Northern went to the U.S. Senate, Senate Bill uh, 184. He went to the U.S. Senate and said, I am seeing patients that have mineral deficiencies. Now, without minerals, vitamins can't work. So we have mineral deficiencies uh, leading to vitamin deficiencies leading to disease. So this is 1935, the middle of depression. What did the U.S. government say? Well, we don't have the money to give farmers to leave their land fallow. We don't have the minerals to give to the people to either take or put on the soil. We can't give them to the farmers. So we, there's nothing we can do. And then back in 1992, they did a survey between 1892 and 1992, and they found that 85% of the minerals in the soil had vanished. Wow. And this is why the food chain doesn't work. Okay, b because the show is also we were casting within the Caribbean. Comparatively, can you compare the, the food source and persons getting sick to those within the Caribbean, let's say from a global perspective? It's the same all over the it's world. The same. And here's why. Can you stop the wind from blowing? So airborne pollutants are airborne pollutants. They don't have to be just in the soil. If a farmer is leaving his land fallow, um, maybe it's going to be restored of minerals. Um, there are certain areas of the Caribbean that may have a higher mineral content, may have a better food supply, less processed foods. Processing takes away nutrition as well. Right. So when we get to this status, when we get to this state, um, perhaps, however, wouldn't you want to maximize or optimize that? Wouldn't you want to live as long as you could, as healthy as you could? And if, if the situation were made easily available to you, doesn't that make sense? Absolutely. And Julia, we all hear about oftentimes they, they spray the crops on the islands. Yes, they do. They do. And they are really trying to cut back on it, which is why I was asking him comparatively, how would that, was that going on? Because right now, the government is really stressing that we go organic as much as possible. So it's killing people. It's killing people worldwide and within the Caribbean also. Wow. Yeah. We're back to the soil, the back water, the soil. and the food. Oh, yes. And it's, it's sad to hear about what's happening in society all over the world. 
So the immune response sounds like something we need to know about, Dr. Fisher. Let's take a break, folks, and we'll be right back with One Love, and Dr. Howard Fisher. All right, welcome back, everyone. Here we are with Dr. Howard Fisher talking about the immune system, immunomodulators, immune response. Tell us more about immune response and where we can go with it and how it will affect our lives and our families. Absolutely, Dr. Amato. What my finding has been and what the empirical data has been is that people taking immune response feel better, don't get sick as often, and that changes their lives. So can you imagine how many days of work do you think the average individual in the United States misses a year? Well, we know absenteeism is up and productivity and performance are down. Right. It costs, it costs billions, if not trillions of dollars a year. Wow. So, so the reality is, if we can affect that, if we can start to affect the incidence of disease, if we can start to have people be sick less, feel better, get less significant diseases, it's rather amazing. Uh, there's certain viruses. There's certain viruses that only the immune system can kill. And there's certain viruses that seem to uh, attack the immune system. There, there's one, and I, I don't want to get into specifics, but there's one that there was, they thought there was no known cure for, that three bottles a month for 12 months, and the lymphocyte, this particular disease, drives down the lymphocyte count, drives down the natural killer cell count, to very low, when it should be 800. This drives it above 800 and drives the viral load, we're talking about viruses here, down under 50, so it's negligible and manageable. So if you're really ill, you want to be taking multiple doses of this product, usually three teaspoons multiple times a day. For the most serious diseases, we have them at three teaspoons four times a day. And if you're just maintaining your health, it's a teaspoon three times a day. And so that teaspoon three times a day, you have a better chance of defeating. Because don't, don't forget that nothing you take is actually defeating disease. Your body is. We had that on a previous show and we discussed the changes that we saw when, when certain waters went in and allowed your body to function. This allows your body to function. I don't particularly like the taste, but you can mix this one because it's got a liposomal carrier system. It, it goes directly into your body without being affected by other foods. There are certain things that, be, that are affected by foods. Uh, this is not one of them. And a lot of people making faces when they, when they taste mm -hmm. this, they go, put it in a smoothie, mix it in a drink, mix it with whatever you want because taking this is what you want to do. My wife and my daughter went away uh, to a yoga ashram uh, recently, and it was in a potential Zika infected area. And so what was our solution? Well, let's drive up the immune system. When your immune system is functioning, you don't have to worry. Okay, I, I, this product sounds like a, a very good product, but is it for everyone and anyone? No, you have to be breathing. You do have to be breathing. If you have to eat to maintain an immune system, and this is all natural in food. Okay. So, is the dosage different for, for people is a better question. Sure, it is. For small children, I give them one teaspoon a day. Okay. If you're over 100 pounds, three teaspoons a day. If you have a serious disorder, well, that's why you come to the, the Harmony Centers, huh? because you have a disorder that you want to sort out. And yes, so there's a, there's a different dosage. Okay. I'm not going to go on a, on a television show and give out dosages for particular disorders. Right. But yes, all you have to do is have an immune system. We can make it work better. All right. Okay. Let's break this down a little bit for the viewers. So immune response, Dr. Fisher, in other words, as far as creating good health, maintaining optimum health, and trying to stay ahead of that immune system going down, 
you're suggesting taking immune response for healthy people or those who think they're healthy. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, propo I'm a proponent of uh, healthy living. Okay. And would this constitute healthy living? Yes. Okay. So would you consider it to be different than or in addition to anybody who's taking vitamins or minerals or? Absolutely. Uh, studies at Harvard University okay. have shown that unless you're getting your minerals and vitamins from a, a natural source, this is all plant-based. Okay. Okay. Unless you're getting from a natural source, they're not particularly effective. So, as I said, the food chain has been affected adversely all over the world. And because the food chain has been affected, we have to supplement. The supplements don't have to be extracts or isolates because that, once again, diminishes their effectiveness. So, yeah, take it as food. Okay. Well, that's great to know, to take it as a, a daily supplement to the bad food to keep the immune system up to speed. And then Dr. Fisher started talking about viral load and people who have sickness, uh, poor health, and issues. I'm sure that's quite a conversation, right? Uh, you know, um, I'm going to come back and do another show for you where we'll talk directly about what we can do about the most significant, uh, the, the disorder that had, you know, 1.6 million new cases last year in the U.S. alone, the one that has 14 or 15 million. We'll do a whole show on that. But for every individual who doesn't want to get to that status, who doesn't want to get to that state, we can change the scenario. We can change your internal environment. We can change your optimization of health. Because right now, if we have 700 million chronic diseases and 328 million people, wow. Yeah, we're, we're not doing well. It's a mouthful. So we're not only changing people, we're changing the face of health care, we're changing society. Absolutely. More people stay healthier and live longer. longer. This world could be a different place. I agree 100%. And the fact of the matter is, we have to make people aware. We have to let them know that something exists to help them. I strongly believe in that because a lot of people don't know the knowledge and you bring in the knowledge to them, you'll know exactly where to go and what to do. I'm really excited about this. Dr. Fisher, thank you so much for introducing us to the immune response. We may have to bring Dr. Fisher back and learn more about the immune response and what's inside that bottle. All right, folks. One love. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time. Miss Julia Brown, over and out.